When you say yes to one thing, you are simultaneously saying no to an infinite number of others. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's audio clip, we hear from Rory Vaden, author of Procrastinate on Purpose, Five Permissions to Multiply Your Time, as he explains why you can't solve today's time management challenges with yesterday's time management strategies. Enjoy. How is it that we work longer hours? We're moving faster than we've ever moved in history, and yet we never seem to be caught up. How is it that we know more about time management today, and yet stress is at an all-time high? The reason why is because everything you know about time management is wrong. I first started to realize this a couple years ago. It was early on a Saturday morning. I was at my business partner's house and I was picking him up for a very important international leader planning retreat. And uh, he has this two-year-old baby girl named Haven. And Haven is the sweetest little thing you can imagine. She has curly brown hair and these sweet, soft brown eyes. And we live in Nashville, so she has a little southern accent that's developing. And as I'm picking up Dustin and we're about to leave, Haven comes sprinting down the hallway. And she leaps and she latches on to Dustin's leg. And she says, Daddy, where are you going? And he looks down at her and he says, Oh, I'm sorry, baby Haven. Daddy actually has to go to work today. And she looks up at him and her eyes well up with tears. And she says, no, daddy, please, no work today. No work, daddy. And in that moment, I realized two things. The first is that I myself am not ready to have kids just yet. (laughs) The second is that even though everything that you've ever heard about time management is all logical. Tips and tricks, tools and technology, calendars and checklists, it's apps, it's all logic. What I realized in that moment from a two-year-old is that today time management is no longer just logical. Today time management is emotional. And how our feelings of guilt and fear and worry and anxiety and frustration, those things dictate how we choose to spend our time as much as anything that's in our, in our calendar or on our to-do list. In fact, there is no such thing as time management. You can't manage time. Time continues on whether we like it or not. So there is no such thing as time management. Really, there is only self-management. Well, that was the first big realization that I had. In order for you to understand the second, I want to take you on a quick history of time management theory. And that really began in the late 50s and 60s. And it came during the Industrial Revolution. And and early time management thought was all about, it was one-dimensional. And it was all based on efficiency. And the idea with efficiency was that if we could develop tools and technology to help us do things faster, then theoretically that would give us more time. Well, there's nothing wrong with efficiency. All things being equal. Efficiency is is better, and yet there is an unfortunate limitation to efficiency as a strategy for time management, And, and it's evidenced very well by the fact that we all carry around miniature computers in our pockets, and yet somehow we're still never caught up. Well, in the late 80s, Era 2 time management thinking emerged. I feel like it was pretty much single-handedly ushered in by the late, great Dr. Stephen Covey. And and Dr. Covey introduced what we are referring to as two-dimensional thinking. He gave us something called the time management matrix, where the x-axis was urgency and the y-axis was importance. And the, the beauty about this was that it gave us a system for scoring our tasks. And then based on how they scored in these two areas, we could prioritize tasks one in front of the other. Prioritizing is all about focusing first on what matters most. 
And for the last 20 years, this has really been the pervasive mode of thinking as it relates to time management theory. And it's not that there's anything wrong with prioritizing. In fact, prioritizing is as valuable a skill, a skill today as it ever has been in history. And yet, even though we throw that word around like it's the end all be all to time management theory, right? We say, get your priorities in order. Or it's just, you don't have the right priorities. Well, unfortunately, maybe that's not really the case. Because there is a massive limitation to prioritizing that nobody ever talks about, and that is this. There's nothing about prioritizing that creates more time. All prioritizing does is take item number seven on your to-do list, and it bumps it up to number one, which is valuable in and of itself, but it doesn't do anything inherently to create more time, and it does nothing to help you accomplish the other items on your to-do list. I mean, if you think about efficiency, efficiency is kind of like running on a hamster wheel. And if you think of prioritizing, it's really about borrowing time, borrowing time from one activity to spend on another. It's kind of like juggling. And that really describes the way that we, we even talk about time. I'm, I'm juggling a lot, or I'm trying to balance a lot. And in that paradigm, there's only two strategies. One is to do things faster, or to do more things. And that is what the world kind of feels like, right? How does it feel to know that really all we are is a bunch of juggling hamsters sprinting towards an inevitable crash landing? <laughs> you cannot solve today's time management problems with yesterday's time management thinking. Please keep in mind, this is about half the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.